So you're in the market for a new set of skis. Go into your local ski shop, or I guess nowadays shop online for that matter, and you notice there's a huge variance in how wide skis are these days. Probably thinking to yourself, well, what's the difference? Why would I choose one ski width over the other? How does one help me? And more importantly, which one do I actually buy? Well, today's video can be going over exactly that. What's going on everybody? Welcome to Mountain Vibes. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If this is your first time here, thank you very much for stopping by and consider subscribing if you're into ski and snowboard related tech videos and then that way you're not gonna miss any time I put up a new upload. Now, as mentioned in the intro in today's video, we are gonna be going over ski width, more importantly, how wide the skis should be that you actually purchase. Now, before I actually get into all the different categories and like who's or what's suited for who, you gotta figure out or ask yourself a few simple questions. And the first question is, what type of skier are you? If you're a beginner, intermediate, advanced, because depending on the type of skier you are, how wide your skis are will definitely impact your experience on the mountain. And the second question is, where do you actually ski? Or what is the type of terrain that you're actually able to ski? Now, is it cold? Is it icy? Are you mostly on groomers? Do you live somewhere where there's a lot of snow or where you have the ability to kind of take in the, an all terrain or an all mountain experience? So once you figure those out, you can start figuring out like how wide the ski should actually be. And who knows, maybe there's some of you out there that actually have two, maybe even three sets of skis for different types of terrain, different types of days, but we will cover all of that within this video. Now, also keep in mind that with the categories I'm gonna be going over, there is a little bit of gray area. There are some types of skis that kind of like will definitely cross certain categories for sure, but it's up to you to decide and like what type of ski you should actually buy. So without further ado, let's get into our first category, shall we? Okay, so our first category today is going to be the narrow category. Generally, these skis fall in between the measurements of 65 to 80, 82 millimeters underfoot. Now, that sounds a little bit foreign to you. Underfoot means exactly what it is. It's how wide the ski is under your foot when you are actually stepped into the bindings. Uh, as well, if you're not 100% sure exactly where to find it, uh, in some cases, the width is actually in the name of the ski. So this one, for example, is the Blizzard Thunderbird 7.2. 7.2 meaning that the skis is actually 72 millimeters underfoot. Now, if by chance the skis that you're looking at doesn't even have like a number associated with the name, there are is another way you can actually figure this out, and that is by looking at the spec sheet. Either you will find this online or even it'll be printed on the ski itself. Uh, you'll be looking at three numbers, you'll find them. Uh, the first number is going to generally be the largest, and it's going to be how wide the ski is up at the tip. The middle number is going to be how wide the ski is in the middle or underfoot. And then the last number is going to be how wide the ski is at its tail. So if you can't find out the throughout the name of the ski, just look in the spec sheet, or if you're in a shop and you can actually hold the ski itself, just look for the specs. It'll either be printed on one ski or the other. So this first category, the narrower category, is generally tailored to a, a beginners, or generally people who spend their days carving on icy groomers. And also the special case for, let's say, mogul skiers. Those things are actually fairly narrow. I'd say that's at the lower end of that 65 millimeter range. Um, a reason why beginners want a narrower ski is because it is a lot quicker and a lot easier to put it from one edge to the other. And as well, because of the way that it's shaped, it actually has a little bit more pronounced hourglass shape in it. So what happens with that is once you put the ski on edge, it's going to want to turn. Uh, and as well, the turns will be a lot tighter. So if you are kind of starting out, the ski is going to want to kind of turn, not necessarily by itself, but with a little bit more ease. And if you need the ski to stop quickly, just put it on edge and the ski will want to naturally want to turn and essentially help you stop in the process. And at the same time, if you are someone who just like say you're an advanced skier, but you really just don't want to kind of go off piece, you don't do bumps, you just really just want to stick to the groomers, uh, a narrower ski will definitely be A, a lot quicker, B, it's going to make your turns a lot snappier, a lot quicker edge to edge, shortening up those turns. And at the same time, you are going to be able to ski a little bit faster with a lot more stability because the skis can be able to drive and bite into the ground, especially if it's icier out. Uh, by having a narrower ski, it's gonna make it significantly easier for you to get that thing on edge and really drive the ski. So narrower category, uh, those who are find themselves mostly on groomers and beginners. Now at the same time, I'm not saying that you can't necessarily shy away from this, but usually this is gonna be the category or the width of skis that you will generally be looking at. Okay, the skis in our second category generally fall in the widths between 84 to 100 millimeters underfoot. Uh, 
I'm going to consider this the all-terrain category. Uh, I don't want to use the term all-mountain. That term does get thrown around a lot. But the thing is, the term all-mountain does vary from one region to another. I say over in Europe, an all-mountain ski would be considered a little bit narrower because generally you're going to be more on groomers and you can still ski the whole mountain, but you're just going to be on groomers. Whereas, let's say if you're in the Pacific Northwest or British Columbia where I'm in, you generally want something a little bit wider because you want to say ski trees, ski powder, do groomers. Uh, so this category is kind of going to be more of the Swiss army knife category, so to speak. Uh, if you're on the lower end of the spectrum and say the 84 to 88, yes, they will be a little bit more groomer focused, but you're also going to get a little bit more width underfoot, uh, a little bit more width overall, more surface area compared to the previous category. So this will offer you a little bit more flotation uh, if by chance you do get some fresh snow one morning and you just want to go have some fun in the tree, so to speak. Another thing you have to factor in is like how the skis are actually shaped underfoot. You know, usually the narrower skis in this category will have a little bit more camber because they are in a sense designed more for groomers. And then as the skis get wider, you will have a little less camber and a little bit more rocker at the tip and tail, allowing the tips to stay up in softer snow. And with the tail rocker, it's gonna allow you to kick that back end around a little bit easier. And as well though, as the skis get wider, you notice that your turns become a little bit larger and they may become a little bit harder to manage depending on the overall construction of them. So if you're someone who likes to do more, let's say wider, bigger GS turns, who just likes to cruise and go fast, uh, you go for something a little bit wider just because the way that the skis are designed, your turns will generally be a little bit larger. Or if you're someone who's to say buying a brand new set of skis and you don't really have the, you know, the money to buy multiple sets of skis, you get something like within this category and it's going to be more or less the Swiss army knife, so to speak. So if you're looking for something to kind of like does everything, but doesn't do everything quite well, that 88 to like 92 underfoot would be a great ski for something to you to use for an all terrain experience. All right, moving on to our third category, and that is going to be skis that fall between the measurements of 88 to about 108 millimeters underfoot. Now, I'm going to consider this the uh, West Coast all-terrain category. Now, yes, by all means, you do not have to live on the West Coast to enjoy these skis. It's just generally speaking, uh, for those who live out here, uh, you're going to want something a little bit wider just to kind of give you yourself a nice all-terrain experience. So, at the same time, keep in mind, if you are someone who's a little bit more groomer driven, but still wants to be able to do a tree run, uh, stick to the 88 to 92 millimeters underfoot. That way the skis are going to be narrow enough that you're going to be able to throw it edge to edge. It's going to give you a lot more grip, but having that added extra surface area will prevent your skis from nose diving if you decide to go into some fresh snow. Uh, now, at the same time, if you are an individual who just wants like a one ski to do it all, uh, go for a little bit of something on the wider end of the spectrum. So let's say like 98, 106, 108. Uh, this way, this is going to be a ski that's going to offer you float. And depending on how the ski is shaped, will provide you with enough edge grip so you can actually spend some, uh, spend some time on the groomers as well. Another group for this category is going to be the people who are into touring. With these skis here, it's gonna give you a lot more added width, so that way it's gonna keep yourself up out of the soft snow, especially if you're gonna be breaking ground or especially if you're gonna be carrying a big heavy pack. Something a little bit on the wider side will definitely help keep you afloat. Uh, now also keep in mind though, uh, as the skis get wider, sometimes that the shape does change a little bit more. Uh, by that, I mean you may end up with a little bit more rocker compared to something else that's on the narrower side. So when you have more rocker, you are essentially losing edge grip. And so the ski is not going to quite bite as well. It is going to keep the tips up out of soft snow. So it's not going to nose dive, but so just keep that in mind so that as you go wider, the skis may be shaped a little bit differently. So skis that fall into the uh, 108 to 108 millimeters underfoot category or spectrum, so to speak, uh, is definitely going to be uh, for someone who is looking for the a true all-terrain experience. Okay, on to our fourth and final category. And in this one, you will find skis that are 110 millimeters and up. And you guessed it, these are your powder skis. Uh, these skis are designed to give you the most optimal float in powder and soft snow conditions. They tend to have a lot more rocker at the tip and tail, allowing your skis to give you a little bit more float and keep you on top of that soft snow. Uh, many of them may not even have any camber underfoot at all, making it completely flat, 
allowing you to actually pivot the skis a lot easier in softer conditions. Uh, so having said that, they're not necessarily designed to handle groomers very well due to the fact that they do not have a lot of camber underfoot, minimizing the amount of edge grip that you actually have. Uh, I took these up a couple weeks ago and it was a lot firmer than uh, I had actually anticipated. So I did notice that like, yes, the skis managed. I did have to work them a little bit harder uh, because I was lacking the edge grip that I actually wanted. I still managed, it was still a fun day on the hill, but if you're someone who's kind of looking into these skis, I really do not recommend that this is your one and only ski. Uh, generally, people have powder skis as a second ski for those days when it's actually like, you know, you get a nice foot that falls overnight and you really want that most optimal floating conditions. So that's it for me for today, everybody. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, like a lot of these categories tend to bleed into one another. So you kind of have to figure out exactly where it is that you actually ski, what type of skier you are, and what you're actually looking for in your skis when you actually decide on what width you should actually get. Having said that, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you are not already. Support your local ski and snowboard shop. Stay safe, stay healthy out there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.